esto. El enemigo, o sea, no le dijo nada diferente a mí. Adri, ¿me escuchás? Sí, te escucho, ¿me escuchás? Sí, sí, te hice entrar a vos solo por ahora, vamos a segundo. Eh, pero yo voy a hacer entrar solamente a todos. Eh, no sé tanto, estoy tratando de entrar con la tablet. Ay, yo te hago entrar, ¿eh? Sí. sí. Eh, Ah, tenemos que mutearnos. Entro, ahí está en la sala de espera tu, tu hermana Adri. Ah, se sumó. ¿Qué es lo que tengo que hacer? Tuvimos recién un señor que estaba eh, con del viste los, de los consultantes de los extranjeros, un señor extranjero que fue a la municipalidad y parece que lo trataron medio mal. Estuvimos hasta dos minutos recién diciendo, bueno, perdón, tenemos que arrancar un evento. <risa> Calmándolo. Sí, pero estaba re enojado, ¿eh? así pegando a las mesas, porque no puede ser, si me van a tocar así, me vuelo. Eh, mucho gusto, ¿cómo estás? Eh, ¿Cómo Adrián, se llama? Vos. Ah, Adrián. Adrián, se ve, mi nombre es Yuriko. Oh, Yuriko, ¿todo bien? Bien, bien, bien. Eh, un poco nerviosa, lo que vamos a hacer hoy, pero bueno, ahí vamos. No me siento tan este, cualificada peruana, pero se hace lo que se puede, ¿verdad? No, está, está más que calificada, no te preocupes. Eh, bueno, bueno. Pues, tengo todo un país y yo voy a hablar solo de fútbol, ¿no? así que... <risa> Sí, eh, entró muy, eh, muy san, y dije, bueno, hago entrar a todos, ¿sabes? ¿Ahorita ya? Sí, eh, ok, sí, do, un minuto más. Eh, espérate, perdón, es que... Oh. Yep. Ya, 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 es ok. Bueno, eh... Quería tener... Oh. Oh. A ver ahí. Está bien. Creo que estaría bien. Voy a cambiar mi nombre, está en japonés. No. He puesto las primeras este, sílabas de mis dos apellidos para que nadie se sienta mal por aquí. <risa> el de Perú y el de Japón. Bien. ¿Les parece? ¿Arrancamos? Sí, vamos. Vamos. Chivario. Hello, everybody. Hi, how are How are you? Everybody, thank you for participating today. Uh, I think we can start now. Um, well, well, first we we want to make a like a brief explanation about this this place. This is Kosa International Plaza. We are in, in Okinawa, in Okinawa Shi, in the city of Okinawa, in the prefecture of Okinawa. Uh, our main goal is to, to support the, the foreigner people living in, in Okinawa. 
And with that excuse, uh, now that we have this coronavirus problem, we decided to create this event to be able to show other places of the world for not only the Okinawans, but also for everybody who wants to participate. And today, in today's edition, we are going to speak about uh, Argentina and Peru. And tomorrow we will have a, a second edition talking about uh, Colombia and Indonesia. Um, I, we will start now with, I present Adri. I introduce, uh, introduce you Adri Todaro. He's my friend from Argentina. He's uh, now living in, in Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires, it's uh, 11, 11 p.m. at night. So thank you very much for, for helping me and supporting me with this event. And okay, let's start. Uh, I will share my screen. Sorry. Can you see my screen? Yes. Sorry, we are taking a little more time. We have a, a consultant just before this event, so we, we couldn't prepare as much as we wanted, but okay, let's start. Okay, well, first of all, well, like I said before, Adrian and me, we will introduce a little about Argentina. We are going to speak like general stuff from Argentina, especially like uh, tourist, tourist spots like Cancun uh, Otokoro. And um, Adri will, I ask Adri to talk about like Argentinian passions and Argentinian football and, and those things. Uh, at first, I'm showing here in the map where is Argentina. I'm sorry, it's written in Japanese, but it's in, in the most southern point in the American continent. Uh, it's the surface from Argentina is seven times the surface from Japan, from whole Japan. And it's really far from Okinawa now. It's something like um, 21,000 kilometers away. So to come here, it takes, I think it took me like 36 hours. Uh, like first plane to America, something like United States, something like 12 hours. And I have to change plane to Tokyo, another like 13, 14 hours. And then another plane from Tokyo to Okinawa, like three more hours. Uh, but well, like, I think when my grandparents came from, my grandparents are from Okinawa. When my grandparents came from Okinawa to Argentina in 1950, they came by a ship by barco, I don't, fune? I forget how to say in English, ship, right? Uh, by, it right? Uh, like, by, and they, it took, that time it took two months to come to Argentina. So if I compare with that 36 hours, it's not that much. <laughs> uh, then, well, the, the population of Argentina, it's uh, like 44 million, almost 45, a million persons. Um, I think also if we compare to Japan, it's just the like the 20% of the population from, from Japan, even though the surface is seven times more, it's like the population it's really little in compare with compare with Japan. Um, the language, the main language is oh sorry, the main language is Spanish. And our religion is Catholic, like in general, everybody is Catholic. Um, so then we live in the, in the 
uh, Argentinian capital in Buenos Aires. This is like the most iconic uh, image from Argentina, from, sorry, from Buenos Aires. Uh, this place is called the Obelisco and it's in the 9 de Julio Avenue. 9 de Julio means July 9th Avenue. It's like the most widest, the most widest avenue in the world. Um, I will show you just some, some video from Buenos Aires that I would like you to, to be able to see. Uh, sorry. Uh, something happened. Sorry. So, okay. Um, Hmm. It's not this, sorry. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I cannot show you the Argentinian video, I'm sorry, uh, the Buenos Aires video. I will now share some, uh, the next video and I will try to show the Buenos Aires video at the end of the, the conversation. And... Okay. No, no, I can. Si observaron el edificio, pudieron verlo, está lleno de antenas. Pavarotti, María Calas, y otros grandes. Entonces, si la quieren visitar, a visitar. La primera solamente duró unos 4 o 5 años. Catedral corto de Parecían que parecía una caja de chocolates en en cuanto al fútbol. Ellos dicen ser tipo, enseguida por el campo de deporte, donde van a ver algunas de las disciplinas que se practican acá. O sea que no, también había conventillos, o sea, casas colectivas acá a la derecha.
Por este lado van a ver arriba la estación de transbordo, todavía es la boca sexta, es un lugar bien popular. en Puerto Madero tiene como una especie de ventana por eso le llamaban la calle de la Bella Vista y es por eso que muchos estudiantes vienen de diferentes países de, que se encuentra derecha que es la Floralis tres años bastante delgada se encuentran los familiares recientemente fallecidos Sorry, well, that was like uh, some of from the most popular spots in Buenos Aires. I uh, thank you for the comments. I also really like the music. Um, I even I think I cry a little when I hear "Don't Cry for Me, Argentina." I just don't I'm really nostalgic. And okay, I will continue. Sorry if I cry a little. <laughs> uh, Okay, now like one of the most uh, popular spots, not in Buenos Aires, but in, in all Argentina is the Iguazu Falls. The Iguazu Falls is the, um, the largest waterfalls in the world. It's has like, you can see it from Brazil and from Argentina. Argentina and Brazil, it's, they are next to each other. And you can like the waterfalls cross both countries. So if you take in count both sides, it's like the most, a large uh, waterfall in the world. Uh, this is uh, this place calls the Devil Throat, like the uh, Oni no Nodo, I think. Like, and it's what well, I will I will show you just a video because I think it's amazing. Uh, I'm sorry, that's me, but this is a video. Oh This was short, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, this is me when I went there. Uh, it's really, it, when you are standing in that side, there's so much amount of water that you got all wet, but it's incredible. When I was there, I was like breathless. Like I couldn't believe there was such a wonderful place. This is the, it was a false, it's one of the seven nature wonders. And I really strongly recommend everybody that if you go to Argentina, you should go also to the Iwaso Falls. This video, it's if you go to the park, you can uh, hire like a like a trip. You can you you ride a like a little boat, and they take you close to the to some small waterfall. And I thought it was really funny. I checked the price now and it's something like $40 today. So I think it's not expensive. And I want to show you this video because I think it was also amazing. <laughs> This is the final picture is myself. Uh, okay, then the other really, really popular spot in Argentina is Perito Moreno Glacier. I don't know if I spell well in, in English. I think I spell it in Spanish, I'm sorry. 
Um, also, this glacier is the only one in the world that is actually moving. There, of course, there are other glaciers, but this is the only one that is still moving. Um, okay, so. There's, there's also like a one trip you can do there that they have, you have two kinds. One is like just a short trekking. It calls mini trekking. I think it costs around $100 and you can walk on the glacier for 30 minutes. But when I went there, I did another trip that it's called Big Ice. It's a little more expensive, something like uh, now, I think it's something like $250 but you can walk like seven hours. It's like a really long trekking. Um, you can see places like this, no? Like this is like a cave of ice. It's really, I don't know, for me it was really crazy. Uh, and also here is like a little video walking there. And well, I cannot make a presentation about Argentina without feeling a little bit of tango. Uh, really, I will tell you the truth. I, I, I don't know much about um, tango. Like I just, I don't know how to dance. I just really like the music and well, I will show you the, the video first. That song it's called Por Una Cabeza is sing, uh, sung by Carlos Cardel. Mm, really, yeah, I think I will cry today. Uh, <laughs> okay, I will, I will continue. Um, to, well, yeah, I will cry, definitely I will cry. Uh, this is uh, like the most typical Argentinian food. It's called asado, it's like a barbecue. Um, uh, of course, I, I really like the, like the taste, the flavor of the, the meat, but what I most miss or mo most like about the asado is like, it's just like an event, you know? For example, you start on a, a Sunday morning, you gather with your friends, family, first, first you drink some mate, make the asado, drink some wine, eat some meat, enjoy with your friends. Mm, it's not like the Japanese yakiniku. <laughs> Um, and oh, also I miss this. <laughs> okay. Well, this is like, I think th these pictures I had it, so I don't remember if actually, probably Adri made some of them. I think from the right one, I think Adri made it. 
it looks like your grill. <laughs> yes, it will be. <laughs> and okay, and I will let talk about this special part, like about soccer, football, uh, soccer, like this Argentinian passion. I ask Adri to to participate in this event because I think he's like. He actually is, represents all the Argentinian passion, in my opinion. So, Adri, please. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you uh, for the introduction. I, I have the, the hard task of trying to, to explain a, a passion or a feeling uh, and try to put in words what football is, is for us. First of all, a kind of disclaimer. I will always mention this as football. I know that for some countries, it's soccer, but for me, it's football. So I'm sorry, but we play with food, so we need to call with the proper name. Uh, but, but well, trying to, to explain what's the, the feeling that we have for, for football, I believe that first of all, we need to mention why this is really, really popular in Argentina. And I consider that first of all, because it's really easy to play, you only need a ball and uh, you didn't you don't need always an official ball i remember that we were at school um, we prepared a ball with socks with much paper a pencil case whatever we have in order to have fun and the other important factor i consider that is that football promotes social integration it doesn't really matter in which situation you are you can always play so it's create kind of equality. And the result of those two factors and the passion that we have, I believe that is the main reason of having the two greatest football players in the history from Argentina. That is, of course, Maradona and Messi. I don't go deeper on them because they are really well known. We, most of us know their the successful careers. But, but I believe that it's amazing how these two great players born in the same country. So if we want to, to move to the next slide, Aki, I will try to focus on my passion and try to put some common examples of situation of the life in order to, to explain uh, how it worked for us. So just a detail in order to give some background, I want to mention that Buenos Aires is one of the cities with the highest quantities of stadiums per square meter in the world. So this is another factor, but honestly, they're just a unique stadium that is the most beautiful that Aki will share in the next screen. There we have it's River Plate Stadium. Of course, I'm River fan, but in this case, I think that it's the real situation. There's no other stadium like the Monumental. Uh, and well, this is one, my second home, if I need to, to define in a, a little war. So trying to, to go back in order to explain the, the passion and the, what we feel, I mentioned that I will try to share examples of common situations. And one of the examples is like my mood. It's always subject on the result of the match. If River wins, I'm happy. If River loses, I'm sad or angry based on the match. <laughs> Another situation, it's like when I need to make a plan, whatever it is, and now trying to meet with friends or planning a holiday, whatever, I always check the calendar when we are play because it has the priority. Uh, I know that it could sound a bit crazy, but this is like how it feels or how it works in Argentina. And another common situation, it's like when we meet someone for the first time, after a couple of minutes, we want to know if that person likes football or not. And which team they support. Why? Because it's easier to have some small talks about football than weather or other things. 
you know that you have an ally over there. So trying to, to explain or to show with pictures and some videos, we will share some videos that I record in the stadium. Uh, we will see two videos. One is the welcome to the team during the, the pre-match. And the second one is the celebration after winning uh, the tournament or that became as the champion of America. So Aki, if you want to, to play them. Basically, as I mentioned, the first one was the welcome to the team. Uh, just to give you the, the amount or the quantity of persons in the stadium, it has a capacity of 70,000 persons, but usually in this kind of match, there's a bit more. So 75,000 more or less. Uh, uh, and then I, I do not want to, to extend bit more, but last not least, I want to mention one of the most amazing things that I, I made in order to follow or to support River. On 2015, I traveled to Japan just to, to see River in a tournament. I traveled around three days and spent there less than 15. Uh, so that was amazing. Uh, the good news is like I was not alone. Other 23,000 fans of River were there too. Uh, and well, in the next slide, Aki will share two videos. One is from in Osaka that we, we make kind of demonstration the day before of the match. And the last video is inside Jog. Um, stadium in the final. So, Aki, whenever you want. So I expect that you you can have a a little show of what football for us. And uh, just to to close, I will read a, a phrase for an author. 
kid from Uruguay, but I believe that it's really, really useful and representative of what we, we feel. That basically it says that a man can change everything, his face, house, family, girlfriend, even his religion. But there's one thing that cannot be changed. A man cannot change his patient. And football for us is our patient. Adri, thank you. Thank you. That was, uh, I knew I chose the right person to, to ask for support. It was great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It was amazing. I, I hope everybody could like uh, understand more about like Argentinian passion, not only maybe like the things about uh, tourist place or food or those kind of things. I think you can look for on YouTube or you can look for anywhere in, in the internet, but I want somebody who explain this kind of stuff that it's not easy to explain. So Ari, I think it was super great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't thank know if, if anybody has any question or want to say something, uh, we can start from the question. And if it's not, we can start with Peru presentation. Sorry, but yeah. Is there any? Anyone have questions? Okay, there's one person raising hands or is that clapping? Okay, I'll ask a question. <laughs> so the, at the very beginning, I see a very powerful buildings. Is there any team or like, do they have some intention to do like put Wakala there or they just like randomly paint? in that color uh, I, I think the, the story from that place it's called caminito it's a place that it's close to the port so, uh, in in buenos aires so the different colors it's because when uh, the foreigners came by ships they use the paint from the ships to paint the houses so that's why it's always uh, like all para para, like all different and yes next to that area there's uh, like another team that it's like the rival from River Plate that's why we are not going to explain about that in this uh, session <laughs> no no sorry sorry uh, honestly there's like in Argentina the two main teams are River and Boca Juniors that it's like the other uh, not so popular team in Argentina and uh, <laughs> and well and it's in that area it's the, the colors are blue and yellow but I don't know much about the story because it's a little team. It's a little team, no, no much history. <laughs> uh, thank you, Wilson, for, for your question. Uh, if anybody has anybody else has another question or something to ask. I think I was uh, uh, I okay. That I think if that's okay, Yuri, can we start with the Peru presentation? Yes, thank you, Akira. It was uh, Akira and also uh, Adrian. Yes. Thanks so much for the Argentina presentation. I feel like I really want to go to Argentina now. I feel like Argentina is uh, South America, Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to experience this river football passion too. <laughs> Adrian, I think we already. Uh, Get our goal. Send me a message. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Send me I'm, a message I'm when already, you are here. I will give I'm you. I'm already practicing. Like, vamos River. You know? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Is that correct? Yeah. That, that's perfect. Of course. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So now we're gonna be. I will be presenting about Peru. I have a special guest too. I will be later on uh, interviewing then. It's my grandmother from Peru and my father from Peru. <laughs> they are right now connected too. Yeah, they're saying hi. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Share screen. Hola, hola. Saludos. Hola. 
Bye bye. Hello, hello. Hi, so, hi. Um, when we get to the chance to interview them, it will be in Spanish, but uh, we're going to be interpreting for them. Okay, everyone. Thank you. So now we're going to see a video about Peru, and then we're going to get into the story. It's good now. I, I think I cannot hear the audio of the video. Sorry, can everyone hear the audio? No? Oh, that was my mistake. I'm so sorry. Yuko san, tabun are des. Are jia desu ka? Share screen suru toki ni. Hi. I think there's some uh, check. Box that's saying that share the audio as well thing. Oh, okay, I'm gonna try to stop that screen share right now and try it again. Better, mm. just one minute, everyone. I'm so sorry.
All right, welcome to Peru. Bienvenidos a Peru. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. So I think most of you already know where where is Peru. Um, I will just explain a little bit about Peru because I wanna uh, today I wanna explain a village that I am from Peru. But yes, this is pretty much Peru. Peru it's um is located in Western South America. It is bordered in the north by Ecuador and Colombia. In the east by Brazil. In the southeast by Bolivia. In the south by Chile, and in the south and west by the Pacific Ocean. Peru is a mega diverse country with habitats ranging from the arid plains of the Pacific coastal region in the west to the peaks of the Andes mountains, extending from the north to the southeast of the country to the tropical Amazon basin. Rainforest in the east with the Amazon River. Peru has a population of 33 million and its capital and largest city is Lima. And Peru also have one of the seven wonders in the world and it's Machu Picchu. That's the last uh, video that you see. Also Peru is very famous for its food because it's a diversity country and very, it, it has a lot of variety of food. But today I wanna talk about, do you guys still see my share screen? No, okay, I'm gonna share now. Having trouble sharing. I'm so sorry. Uh, right, right here. Okay, Peru, beautiful country. But today I wanna talk about what it is like to live in the countryside of Peru. Today I will welcome you to Camana. That's the village that I am from. It's, and the name is Camana. So Camana, it's placed in here, if you see, Camana is near a little bit by Cusco. This is the Peru map. As you see, Camana is right here. We have Lima, Cusco, and then we have Camana. It's a tiny, tiny village. So Camana is a province in the Arequipa region. The date of its creation is November 9th from, I don't know how to say, 1,539. <laughs> it was called Villa Hermosa de Camana, which means beautiful village of Camana. The province of Camana begins its population history before the arrival of the Spaniards, Spanish, when as is known, cultures such as Nazca, Paracas, Coyaguas, Huaris, Chuquibambas, and even the Incas inhabited its valley. So this is pretty much what it is, Kamana. We have a lot of rice farms in Kamana. It's very, it's very popular, the rice of Kamana. We have uh, the sea, beach, and a lot, of, a lot of surface also go to Kamana to surf there. And the kids, they always like to play in like a rivers. I used to play a lot in the rivers. And the first pictures is like the plaza of Kamana where everyone always go there and 
talk, meet with people. That's the, the main point of Kamana. We don't have mall or anything like that. Our, our meeting point or our meeting mall was here in Plaza. All right, so now let's take a little, let's talk a little bit about our food. This is uh, some kind of beans that we eat, but we call this special bean porotos. So in Kamana, we always eat a lot of porotos and something, some fun fact about this is that I was born in Kamana and I came to Japan when I was six years old. And then I came back to Kamana when I was maybe 14 years old. As my grandma says, I was too skinny when I came back to Kamana. So the year that I was in Kamana, she gave me a lot of porotos to be strong <laughs> and to not be skinny. Also, our popular dish is chupe de camarones because Kamana uh, has a lot of rivers and we produce a lot of shrimps. So this chupe de camarones, it's a soup, a shrimp soup. We also have something very special that only exists in Kamana and we call this capisca. As you see in the picture, we put a large table, we put like a white cloth in the table and then we put the shrimps. We boil the shrimps with salt and we decorate these shrimps with, with boiled potatoes, sweet potatoes and corns and that's how we eat. We don't use fork, we use our hands. We stand around the table and we eat this capisca and this is also the only exists in Kamana. It's a traditional uh, event to do, capisca. Now we have in the other picture, the Kamana breads and also this is the Peruvian olive. It's also different, the color as you see. Every morning we, we eat this and also we eat with some cheese. And then the other picture is the market. So in Peru, this is not only in Kamana, but this is what I remember. When I was in Kamana, I remember my grandmother always uh, give me bread, give me some olives and cheese. And then after that, before I go to school, she took me to the market to sit in here for my special fruit juice. Smoothies, we can call it smoothies now. But I knew smoothies since like way before. It's like right now it's like a boom, but even before we, I experienced this in my village. <laughs> and also salteñas are like a snack. This is our savory pastries filled with beef, sometimes pork or chicken. It's like a really good snack. It's really yummy. We also have, I remember as a, as a kid, I always have pastelitos. Are these pink ones? And one of these costs you about 50 cents. And then we cannot forget bollos. Bojitos. This is our the Kamana number one sales bread. <laughs> and it's also very cheap. You can buy four for only a quarter for only 25 cents. Okay, so in my village, people still ride horses or donkey. I remember I grew up with my grandparents and we have a little, we have a donkey in the house. And we, and I always ride the donkey with my grandpa. 
because it's not common to have a car. So we, we, we use donkeys or horse to move or to go around. Also this kind of houses are still exist. A lot of the houses in my village are like this in the picture. And as you see in the other picture, uh, I still remember the last time I went to Peru was six years ago and my grandmother still cook with wood. She refused to use the gas stove, but I hear now she is trying to learn how to use the gas stove. <laughs> This is some of the traditions, very popular traditions of my village. Huachanacos or carnavales. It's like a, there's a, in summertime, we have these events and when it's carnavales or huachanacos, which is maybe like one or two weeks, everyone knows about it. So if you go out, you will get wet no matter what. We only respect the old people. So I remember when I was in Kamana and there was the season of Huachanacos or Carnavales, I always hide behind somebody, some old <laughs> adults in order to not get wet. <laughs> also, sometimes they throw you floor or in a worst case, they, you, they throw you eggs. So not that fun. <laughs> Also something funny about my village is that we call everyone primo or prima, which means cousins. We consider our friends or anyone that is in the village as a primo or prima. And they're, if they're more older than you, then we call them uncle and aunt, tío or tía. Also, in my village, in Kamana, it's very popular, the cook fight. We say this uh, in Spanish, pelea de gallos. And it's also, I believe it's also part of Kamana culture. The first picture, this is my, my tío, my uncle. So I remember growing up with my grandparents' house, we always have uh, cooks. One of my uncles are very, um, he's always involved in, in these competitions and he writes many cooks to sell, to compete. So I always uh, see them around my house. All right, we're getting to the last pictures. I'm about to cry. <laughs> I think today is a crying moment for Akira and me. <laughs> we can cry together. <laughs> I'm a little bit homesick. <laughs> this is my grandmother. This is my grandparent, and this is my family. Um, this one is my father. And this is where we grow up. As you see, the background, everything. We, we grow up in a village, so we don't have such a fancy building or anything like that. But to me, this is very important to show. And in this another picture, it's me washing my clothes in the river. <laughs> That's me washing my clothes in the river. And then the last picture is the last time I went to Kamana to visit my family. As you see, this is the, the yard of my grandparents' house. We were there eating some bananas <laughs> with my grandmother, my grandparent, and my great-grandmother was there. Now my grandparent and my great-grandmother are in heaven but it was such a special moment. And as you see now, I don't look like the little girl washing clothes in the river. 
I look Japanese <laughs> doing the peace sign. <laughs> but I'm still Kamaneha in my heart, okay? <laughs> All right, so this is the last picture. Kamana Villa Hermosa, we love from Yuriko. This is me as a baby with my daddy in my village with a cow in the background. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> that was awesome, Yuri. Thank you, really, really. So now I want to interview my grandmother, I call her Mami, Mama Manuela. That's her name is Manuela. And also I want to interview my father. He is he's a principal of a high school in Kamana. They still live in Kamana. <laughs> yes, my grandmother had a little, uh, she, she is now learning how to use the gas stove and also how to use the washing machine, I hear. <laughs> I will do the interview in Spanish and Akira will be uh, interpreting for us. Hola, mamita, ¿cómo estás? Hola, mi amorcito. Bien, ¿y tú cómo estás, mi vida? <laughs> Saludos a todos. Saludos. Saludos a todos en general. They are saying hi to everybody. They are... Dime, eh, mamá Manuela, acaba de compartir que hasta hace poco eh, no, no usabas aún la cocina a gas, pero ya estás aprendiendo, así como también estás aprendiendo a usar la lavadora, a pesar de que lo rechazaste tanto tiempo. ¿Cómo sí, te sientes en esta nueva experiencia de aprendizaje? Muy bien, mi reina, muy bien. Gracias al Todopoderoso. A Dios, nuestro Padre Eterno. En la vida, hija, todo se aprende. Tú sabes que nos hemos criado en la chacra. Y en la chacra, bueno, es como la ciudad. Ya tú conoces, bueno, anteriormente se cocinaba con leña y hacían unas comidas muy ricas, tú lo sabes, ¿no? Ese arroz con pato en brasitas, bien graneadito. Vamos a ponerle un esto para que lo podamos traducir. Ah, oh, Yuriko Sánchez asked to, to her grandmother, eh, like, she knew that the, her grandmother was start to learning how to use the gas stove oh, and how to use the, the washing machine. So she asked her grandmother how she felt about that, like this new experience. And her grandmother answered that, uh, like, you know, in life, everything, like we are always learning. And like, thanks to, to, the, to God Almighty, like we can adapt to the new things. Yuri, tell me if I'm making some mistake or if I should some, add something. Dime si tengo que agregar algo. Yes, that's, that's correct. And, and then she also add, that of course the the best food it's it's made by wood not by gas stove but yeah. she will get used to <laughs> <laughs> and she was telling a little bit of details of some dishes that are the best on on the wood and not on gas stove but she she is learning and she is liking it <laughs> <laughs> gracias mamita mm -hmm. eh, estamos todos muy contentos de poder escuchar tu tu experiencia y ver cómo es este, la vida eh, en Camaná. Entonces, sí, sí. ahora le quiero preguntar a, a mi papá, Eduard, <ríe> que nos cuente un poquito eh, qué se siente de vivir en, en el pueblo de Camaná. Para traducirlo. Bueno, uh, uh, perdón. Uh, now, uh, uh, well, first, Eurico uh, yeah. San thank you to, to her grandmother. Where also, muchas gracias por, por participar. Uh, but, um, Now she asked to his father what, like, what it's, what it's like to to live and uh, to be born and raised in in Camana and to live in Camana. Sorry. Sí, eh, un saludo a todos los que nos observan, a todos los que nos escuchan. En realidad, eh, haber crecido, haber nacido y crecido en este bello lugar, la villa hermosa de Camana, para mí es un orgullo muy grande. Eh, como ya lo explicó Yuriko en su exposición, estamos a 12 horas de lo que es la ciudad capital Lima y a 10 horas de lo que es este, eh, Cusco para llegar a Machu Picchu. 
Eh, Camaná es una zona eminentemente eh, con playas, porque estamos en la costa, y el Perú, como lo explicó también Yurico, ¿no es cierto?, tiene tres eh, regiones muy características. La costa, que está sobre los 500 metros hacia abajo, hacia el nivel del mar. Eh, la sierra, que está por encima de los 500 metros, ¿verdad? Hasta los 4.800, 5.000, 6.000 metros. Y la selva, que muy bien lo ha expuesto Yurico. Y Camaná, para mí, haber nacido y crecido aquí, me llena de orgullo, porque eh, hemos tenido que eh, crecer prácticamente en un lugar como ya lo expuso Yuriko, donde todo es rodeado de chacras, el río al frente, hacia lo que es el oeste, el mar, y, y, y chacras, o sea, este, más libres creo que no habíamos podido haber crecido con esa libertad y de poder también tener el deseo de, de superarnos, ¿no? Uh -huh. uh, ok, Yuriko's father answered that. Well, first of all, like, uh, they feel really, really proud of being born and raised in Camaná. Uh, like it's a place in Peru that it's like 12 hours away from Lima, the capital from Peru, and also 10 hours away from Cusco, that it's the old, other popular spot in Peru. And that, uh, like, as, as Yuriko said, it's a place where it's, you have like the river at, in the front, like the sea on the west, and really like chakras, chakras like pampos, right? Farms. Farms are like farms everywhere. And like, it's the place where really they could born and raised really freely with a lot of freedom to move and to, to, to enjoy. And of course, like always with the uh, main goal to, to get better and to grow up and to superarse. I, 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 you tell me if I, I have another way to say it, to, like to get better, right? Yeah, to get well, better. <laughs> Thank you, Akira. Yeah. Gracias, papá. Eh, dinos qué mensaje nos darías a todos los que estamos eh, ahorita conectados. Te voy a contar más o menos, Akira, si me puedes decir todas las nacionalidades o las personas que están conectadas. Uh, so now I will ask my dad if what he wants to tell us as a message because I think it's the first time for my grandmother to connect to so many people in the world, I believe. So I need Akira's help to see Uh, mm -hmm. from where are everyone just Anymore? to tell my grandmother what she did today and okay. with how many people she connect through internet mm -hmm. maybe she can also start learning a little bit about internet now yeah you can say in spanish i will oh. interpret it for you i go me i'm sorry i will say in english we have people from argentina we have people from uh, indonesia from Colombia, from Peru, from Japan, from, I think that's it, Japan, Argentina, Indonesia, Colombia, and Peru. Is that correct? Is there anyone left behind? No? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mamita, te cuento de que ahorita estás conectada con muchas personas del mundo y tenemos personas de Argentina de Indonesia, que es en Asia, si no me equivoco, perdón si me equivoqué, de Perú, de Japón y también de Colombia. Mira, <risa> bendito sea nuestro Padre Eterno. Ay, mi hijita, te amo mucho. Me siento Igualmente, orgullosa mami. porque Dios te envió. <risa> Entonces, papi... Y papito, ¿qué nos puedes este, decir para despedirnos y, y solamente hacer preguntas si alguien tiene algún mensaje que nos quieras dar a todas estas personas que están conectadas? Sí, eh, bueno, eh, uno de los mensajes que puedo dar es eh, que con esfuerzo y sacrificio se pueden lograr eh, muchas cosas. A pesar de las eh, dificultades que de repente hemos tenido en la niñez para poder eh, crecer, para poder desarrollarnos, para poder estudiar una carrera, porque yo soy profesor, de desarrollo ahora el cargo de director de una institución educativa, estamos eh, construyendo ya la institución educativa con apoyo de las autoridades, entonces creo que los sueños sí se pueden cumplir, tú misma Yuriko eres parte de todo ese progreso que puede tener una persona, ¿no es cierto? Entonces ese mensaje les puedo dar que no hay imposibles cuando uno cuando uno lo tiene pensado y cuando uno este, actúa con bien, 
porque ese es el, 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 lo más importante. Y no es cuestión de suerte, como muchas veces lo hemos hablado, es cuestión de perseverancia, ¿no? Es cuestión de seguir nuestros sueños. Todo lo podemos hacer y no hay edad para hacerlo. Puedes, lo que pasa es que cada uno vivimos nuestros momentos de acuerdo a cómo vamos desarrollándonos. Unos empezaron antes, otros después, pero no hay término. Ese es el mensaje que les puedo dar. Gracias, papá. Realmente te amo mucho. Voy a llorar. Igual, hija. I can interpret that. I might cry, but you know. Yeah. I will support. So, my last, the, my, my father message to everyone is that with effort and sacrifice, everything is possible. Dreams are fulfilled. There are no impossibilities and and everyone can overcome their dream. And it's not about luck, it's about perseverance and following and not giving up on your dreams. And there's also no age limit. So there's never, it's never too late. Just as my father, uh, he was from a really, and still maybe from a really poor village and economic, uh, family too, but he followed his dream and now he is a principal of high school. He also worked for the city hall. So even for him, he, he, he never give up and he realized his dream. So that's his message to everyone. Thank you. So now <laughs> if ever, anyone wants to uh, ask question, I'm so sorry, we are a little bit late, like 10 minutes, but if you guys still want to ask uh, questions or anything, please. Raise your hands. I think we good. Yes. It, it, it's not a question, but I want to say really thank you for, for making your, your grandmother and your father to participate. Um, I, I'm crying today, I was crying. <laughs> and, I'm about to cry too. <laughs> and for mm -hmm. also to remind everybody that in South America, it's at night, it's really late. It's, uh, I think it's uh, 10 at night or 12 at night, depends on in which area. So really, thank you. Uh, muchas, de verdad, muchas, muchas gracias por haber participado y por haber colaborado con nosotros en este evento. Sé que ahora es muy tarde, um, pero... Pero nada, el último mensaje me, me llegó al corazón. <ríe> Muchas gracias, de verdad. <ríe> ok, no, no llores. Que no, llores. <ríe> eh, no sé si mi mamita Manuela se anima a cantarnos una bueno. canción antes de despedirnos. Oh, mi reina. Unos versitos, unos versitos. <laughs> so, before we say goodbye, uh, my grandmother is a good singer, but of course today she... She's a, a lot of nervous and shy because she didn't know this much people is gonna be here. I, I am encouraging her, but let's see if she sing or not. But after this, the event, it's, uh, it's finished. Thank you very much. We I have so much fun and I see you guys tomorrow too. Tomorrow we still have and then next week too. So yeah, that's it for today. Let's see if my mamita Manuela will sing. Que mi amorcito <laughs> lindo. Este, bueno, te voy a decir unas coplas como canto que dicen, ¿no? A ver si te recuerdas tú esos son de, de los guachanacos. Una cancioncita. Dices, sí. sí. Versos. Versos, pues, o sea, son coplas. Y dice así. <laughs> En el cielo hay una estrella que me llama la atención y en la tierra estás tú que me robe el corazón. De los ángeles del cielo les he mandado a pedir una pluma de sus alas para poderte escribir. Del águila real quisiera la pluma del espinazo para poderte decir lo bien que estoy pasando. Porque te amo mucho, mi hija, y pido al Redentor con todo mi corazón que siempre te conserve llena de vida 
y de salud. También te digo, hija mía, que sigas progresando, que sigas adelante. Tú, mi hijita y tu esposo, bendiciones para todos, mi amor. Estoy un poquito afónica, por eso no te puedo cantar, mi reina. Pero a ver, a ver. Aunque sea un pedacito, te voy a cantar. Un pedacito. ¿Qué quieres, marinera o guainito de nuestra tierra? A ver. Guainito quiero. Un guainito. Ay. Clásico de Perú, el guainito. Pero un pedacito. Ya, un pedacito. Ya. Arreglaremos nuestras cuentas. ¿Cuánto tiempo me has debido? Arreglaremos nuestras cuentas, cuánto tiempo te he debido. Y si no me debes nada, todo será concluido. Y si no me debes nada, todo será concluido. Paloma blanca, blanca, paloma, paloma blanca, blanca, paloma. Criaste vuelo y alzaste, criaste pluma y alzaste vuelo, criaste pluma y alzaste vuelo. Si sabes que yo te quiero, si sabes que yo te quiero, ¿por qué me andas engañando? Chinita, yo por ti muero, no me haga padecer tanto. Chinita, yo por ti muero, no me haga padecer tanto. Discúlpame, mi amor. Gracias a todos. Muy sí, linda, increíble. muy linda. M ya mucha. se me cayó el maquillaje, se me cayó el fin. <risa> <risa> beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, um, I get a little emotional, but it's beautiful. And thank you, everyone. So see, you even get emotional in this tour. <laughs> <laughs> we show, those tears are real. <laughs> <laughs> we show things that tourists cannot show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, one, one more thing before we end up the event. Can we take a picture from... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, pero vamos a sacar una foto, si puede ser. Uh, de todos Mira, los mira me pones un filtro ahí porque cuando yo no la analizo me crece más. <risa> a ver, espera, espera un segundo. Mira, 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 mira. Ahí está. A ver, estamos, si puede ser, a los que. A ver, eh, si podemos eh, eh, prender las cámaras para una foto, los que puedan. Yeah, la verdad que. Turn on your cameras if you can. So we're going to take the picture. Kira <laughs> is getting confused with Spanish and English, but that's okay. That's part of our lives. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Perdón. Gomenasai. Ya no sé en qué idioma hablo. Okay. I will, I will take a, sorry. I will take a picture now. Um, okay. So, ikimas. Whiskey. Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Gracias a todos. Continue, Aria, todos hay más. Thank Muchas you, gracias. everyone. A lo que pueda. Mañana gracias. también continuamos el tour. Tomorrow gracias. we still have the tour. So check that and we're going to send you the link. Thank you so much. Abuelita, muchas gracias. Fue hermosa la canción. Oh. <laughs> gracias, <Ale>. Gracias. <laughs> de verdad, muchas gracias. Gracias, gracias a todos. Te amo, mamita. Gracias. Chao, papito. Gracias. Thank you. Ya, mi amor, que Dios te siga besos. bendiciendo. Mira, Muchos para besos eso. para todos. Desde Perú. Gracias a todos. Además. Perú, cara. Gracias, tío. Bendiciones. Muchas gracias. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Marcela. Thank you, Tonaro. Arriba, arriba. Marce está llorando. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias a todos. Thank you, Gaby. Thank you, Mugisan. Thank you. Gaby, Thank gracias. You, gracias a ti. Muchas gracias Thank a todos. You, gracias a todos. Bendiciones para todos. Que el Señor los proteja y los cuide siempre. Muchas gracias. Gracias, tío. Bendiciones. Amén. Amén, sobrina. Amén.